Okay, we were on number five on page 267. And we were just finding the energy at the top when you take this, uh, what was it, wrecking ball and you swing it up 30 degrees. So we had already found the height it reached. We were about to multiply 315 by 9.81 times the 1.34. And when you do that, you should get an energy, gravitational energy at the top of 4140.6. Zero one six joules. So that is the first part of the question. Second part of the question says, what will be the kinetic energy of the wrecking ball when it falls back down? Right? So when it's up here, it has a height that we just found, but it doesn't have a speed. Its speed up here is zero, which means all of its energy is gravitational potential. When it swings back down, as it goes down, it loses height which means it loses gravitational potential energy, but it picks up speed, which means it gains kinetic energy. So when it gets to the lowest part of its swing before it starts to go back up, down here its height is zero, so it has no gravitational potential energy, but its speed is maximum, which means all of its energy must be kinetic. So here all of its energy is gravitational potential, here all of its energy is kinetic, so what is its kinetic energy at the bottom of its swing? It has to be equal to the gravitational potential that it had at the top of its swing. Okay, so you don't have to do any calculations to find that. You just have to realize that it's conservation of energy and there's no energy lost with the pendulum. So then it says, what will be the speed of the wrecking ball at that point? So you could do this two ways. You could say, oh, well, kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. So v squared is just going to be equal to two times the kinetic energy divided by m. So two times 4140.016 joules divided by the 315 kilograms. And remember that'll be v squared. You'll have to take the square root. So v squared gives you 26. 2858 meters squared per second squared, take the square root and get 5.127 meters per second. That's one way you could have done it. The other way you could have done it was with our big long energy equation. 1 half mv initial squared, mgh initial, 1 half kx initial squared equals 1 half mv final squared, mgh final one half kx final squared plus the e lost which there isn't any of okay and so here at the top it has a speed it has no speed but it has a height it has no uh, spring here at the bottom it has a speed no height no spring so you have mghi equals one half mv f squared the m's will cancel you're looking for the speed at the bottom. Multiply both sides by 2. Fill in your numbers. Whoops, don't lose your squared. 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times the height we found there earlier, 1.34 meters. And lo and behold, when you do this for v squared, you get 26.28 five eight meters squared per second squared and when you take the square root you get five point one two seven so it makes absolutely no difference which way you do it they're both a hundred percent correct okay so do it the way that makes, makes most sense to you all right the last one i asked you to do was number seven which says a thirty two kilogram crate slides down a frictionless ramp the initial velocity at the top of the ramp is 2.3.2 is meters per second. Uh, velocity when it reaches the bottom is 9.7 meters per second. The ramp makes an angle of 25 degrees. All right, so let's draw our ramp. So here's my ramp. It says the angle here is 25 degrees. The crate is at the top, and its initial was 3.2 meters per second. When a crate gets to the bottom, its final speed 
is 9.7 meters per second. At the bottom, its final height is zero. We don't know what its initial height is. But um, I think it says it's frictionless. I should read on how long is the ramp, slides down a frictionless ramp. Okay, so in the end, you're going to look for this. You're going to look for this length. But first, if you get the height, then you'll have the opposite side, you'll have the angle, and then you can use sine to find the height. But the first step is to get the height, and we're going to get the height using energy. So 1 half mv initial squared plus mgh initial plus 1 half kx initial squared equals 1 half mv final squared plus mgh final. How come I always run out of room? plus one-half k x final squared plus e lost. So at the top, there is a speed and a height, but no spring. At the bottom, there's a speed, but no height, no spring, and it says frictionless. So we have one-half mv initial squared plus mgh initial equals one-half mv final squared. The m's will cancel and we're looking for h initial. So take your one half v final, v initial over. So it'll be one half v final squared minus one half v initial squared and divide by g. So one half 9.7 meters per second squared minus one half 3.2 meters per second squared divide it by 9.81 meters per second squared. Don't forget to square when you type all this in. And when you do, you should get a height of 4.27 meters. Okay, so then you go back and you say, okay, now I know this is 4.27 meters high, and I know this angle, I can find the length. It's just going to be sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 25 is going to equal 4.27 meters over the L, the hypotenuse. Rearrange for L, L is equal to 4.27 meters over the sine of 25. Either do this in your head or type it in your calculator and you should get that it is 10.11 meters long. That is L. Okay, so hopefully these are getting easier for you.